And I'm just going to wait a couple seconds. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world today. My name is Nancy Jutton. I'm the Get Known to Get Paid Mentor. And today is a very special day because we are talking about YouTube. We are sheltering in place in many places around the country. Many of us are struggling with how we will become visible from our homes to touch people around the world. Many people are having lots of questions about how exactly they can do that, especially if YouTube is something that just the young people do. They're wondering, how is there anything there for me? And then it's like, well, what is it? Why does it matter? What can I do and how can I get started? If these are some of the questions that you have, lucky you, that's what we're talking about today. My very special guest is Sue Ferreira from Wisdom to Wealth Mastery. And she is someone who was a 40-year pediatric anesthesiologist and was saving lives for decades. And then life took a turn. She decided to create something new and in the encore of her life became a YouTube sensation. And I am so honored to have her here with us today. Sue, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Nancy, you know it's always my pleasure. <laughs> Remember when we met at Tammy Lane's Facebook advertising yeah. event? And it was like, it was like we were supposed to be friends for forever. Like, and that's another big point that I would make is that sometimes you meet people at events and you never want to see them again. And then you meet people at events and you think this is someone's going to be in my life for the rest of my life. And that was the feeling I had when I met you, which reinforces a point that I'm, I want to reference another person that we both know, which is Rebecca Zung, who is a very successful YouTuber. And she has this expression, which is stop trying to make not your people, your people. And I think that that is an interesting thing for us to talk about because YouTube is all about showing up and making yourself truly seen for who you truly are. And either people are going to love that about you or they're not, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I, and I think that's, that's especially true with YouTube, probably more than with Facebook. Yes. So um, we want to welcome Chuck Oxford, who's here from the Seattle area. Welcome, welcome. Would you like to say hello or tell us your number one big question that you have for YouTube in your business? Ah, well, um, I would like uh, to, I want to know more about YouTube and how it actually works. I mean, we're all familiar with YouTube, but how does it actually work? Uh, I have my own consulting business. So I'm transitioning from in-person meetings to trying to, I mean, not to try, but I'm going to have to move to the, uh, to the internet. So uh, I'm looking to see how some insights on how this might work for me and uh, how can I best take advantage of it to build, you know, a following, to build a brand. Well, Sue, what if you take it away? I know you've got some slides that you'd like to share that will take us through answering that question quite brilliantly. Don't you agree? And yeah, Maureen Curious is here. I just have to say, Maureen, Sue, you should, you're going to love each other. Maureen has a company called Radiant Morning, where she guides clients to have bold conversations around the final chapter of their lives. So welcome, well, welcome, Maureen. It's valuable. Maureen, before we get started, um, do you have like one burning question about YouTube and how to use it in your business that you, you want to tell us about so we can make sure that we rise up to meet it? Well, I'm just getting started with YouTube, so I am just going to work on it today since I didn't get to yesterday. But uh, gosh, my burning question is, is, I'm sure you'll cover it, how to use it for marketing my business. Okay, great. Well, then we're going, I, I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. What was that? Oh, so mute, every, mute yourself. Be muted. No, Roshana has come on. And oh, I see. Marilla is here. Great. Let's say everybody's going to be muted now. Um, 
I see who it is. It's it's Rakshana. We need Hi. you to we need you to um, mute yourself if you wouldn't mind. There we go. Oh, great. I'm so glad you're here, Rakshana. She's an amazing gal. So we've got a few people here. I'm so glad. And we've got some fabulous content to share. Oh, Bettina Carey's here. Welcome, welcome. So Hi. glad you're here. And uh, take it away, uh, Sue. Let's show some slides and take people through the what it is, the why it matters, the how to apply it. And we will um, um, just chime in when I have questions as you keep this party. Yes, that would be great. I've just got a few. I'm really keeping it to the ultimate basics. Um, and then we'll come back and I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I am going to say that Nancy and I are going to do another session where I will go much more into answering in some ways Chuck's uh, question as to what you actually do to make YouTube happy with you because you've got to keep YouTube happy and I'll talk about that later but um, so I've got a few slides they're pretty basic I'll go through them now and then we'll come back for questions but like I said stop me in the meantime if needed so I am going well to and I want to ask one more question before you start those yes. of you who've joined us today did you have the opportunity to watch her the, the Gary V Sue video do let me see a thumbs up if you saw that Okay, so it looks like you've all seen it. For those who are watching um, by replay, um, Sue, would you just tell us briefly how that happened? Because people are probably wondering, how did you come to the attention of a huge influencer like that? And what happened for you as a result of it? Because that might get people excited about the upside potential of YouTube right out of the gate. Okay, I mean, <coughs> Gary V is the number one or number two business person on YouTube at the moment. Well, I mean, social media everywhere. And I don't know if any of you have seen his rant, um, six minutes for the next 60 years of your life or something, I think it is. Now he made that, <clears throat> he made that video now a long time ago, probably six years ago. And the interesting thing about it is he was ranting on about using your cell phone uh, for video six years ago. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're in an exponential world and we're way, you know, six years is a long time in an exponential world. So like if, if he was ranting on about it, then it's absolutely mandatory now. But, you know, Gary's kind of a, he's a kind of quirky ADD, but like me, right? But ADD guy, it, it, an urban and very dark. I find a lot of his stuff, the way he videos is quite dark. And I live up here in Victoria, really, as the crow flies, hardly any distance from Nancy. And um, I just felt that as I was his avatar in that rant, I'd give him my version. And in fact, I didn't intend to give it to Gary. I did it for fun. So I took all of his words and I did my version of them. And I put it together for fun. And then I was going to put it up on my YouTube channel. And I thought, oh, I might be done for copyright. So I thought, well, I'll ask. No, no harm in asking. So I sent it to, um, actually, I just sent it to Gary's team via his website. And they said, oh, it's hilarious. Put it up. And, and, and so I put it on my own website. Nobody watches it, right? And then about three months later, to my surprise, I'm sitting here doing a webinar on a Saturday morning. And my phone is going bum, 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 bum with messages. And Gary had put it up on YouTube and Facebook. and it had 134,000 views. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, I couldn't believe it. So that, <laughs> you know, must've hit a chord, right? So that, um, and that then makes people want, want you to speak. And, uh, you know, it really brought my business along massively. So I was doing a lot more video, uh, video marketing and teaching video after that. And then, you know, just by pure chance about six months later, I got breast cancer and, you know, it was kind of out of it for a while and I lost the momentum uh, because you do need momentum, right? And, and in fact, in a way that was good because it was the beginning of my transition into what I'm doing now, which is running people's YouTube channels. So that's my story, but it was quite funny. Well, I just love how the acts, you know, you did it just for fun. You, you took a bold step to bring it to their attention and something beyond what you thought was possible 
unfolded that made your star rise. And I just love that story. And I just want to encourage people that they can do that too. And now on with the show. So please. Yeah, and just before I finish that, I, I would say you never ever lose by reaching out to the mentors or the, the big guys. You never lose by doing that. All they can ever say to you is no. Uh, and in fact, I wasn't even asking for anything for me. But I mean, I think those people, you have to realize with video and with the web, every single big guru, and I hate that word, is only one click away. So use them. Brilliant. Mm. Brilliant. Okay. All right. So um, unless there's any questions now, I'll quickly run through my slides. And I hope everyone can see them, can they? Yes. Good. Um, can you I, I'm say gonna... his name again? Can What's you that? sorry? <laughs> I don't think this Marilla, what Gary was that? Gary's name? Gary Vaynerchuk. Is it printed anywhere? I don't, I don't see it. If you're in the Facebook group for Raise Your Voice, Make Your Impact, it's in there and it's also okay. posted on my personal page, so you'll find it there. Okay, thanks. Okay, perfect. All right. So I, I, I'm going to start off. I'm going to basically very simply give you the outlines of the power of video. And before I, <clears throat> I go into the video, I, I want to say that you need to know yourself, know your skills and your gifts, and know that other people want them, and really know who your peeps are before you can expect any benefit from video. I mean, you can do video, um, and I'll set this point, don't get discouraged, your first video isn't going to be so bad. Uh, you may as well keep them because you improve real fast, and it's always good to keep the good ones so you know how much better you've got. But if you don't know what Nancy teaches, you know, if you don't know who you are, if you can't write a bio, if you can't, um, if you can't, if you don't know that you have an audience who needs your stuff, then I would recommend that before you really go into video, uh, I would get to know those parameters first, because we know in the end, people will buy you rather than buy your product. And this is where your presence comes in and the practice on video always helps at any time. But we know people buy you and not your product. And so you need to work in a way that you build a presence to have people come to know, like, and trust you. And that's, that's Nancy's strength. Well, and may, so I, you say, may I make one point about that? Yeah. Uh, you know, there's some people that will, will read the book and follow the instructions and do exactly as they are prescribed. And when you watch them, it feels like they read the book and are doing exactly what was prescribed. And either you love that or you don't, but my guess is that you don't. And I actually had a situation just last week where someone was leading a telesummit and she was interviewing someone that I had just recently met and wanted to get more familiar with. And the hosts were so bland and boring and plain that I just couldn't stand it. It was like I was wading through the way they asked the questions to wait to hear how my wonderful new person was gonna respond. But when I got the confirmation, we're so glad you subscribed to the ABC, whatever it was, I unsubscribed as soon as I got the message because I got out of it what I came to get, but I didn't want any more of those particular people because they just weren't showing up. They read the playbook, but they didn't put themselves into it. And I didn't wanna buy anything from them and I didn't feel any know, like, or trust with them because it felt like they were just reading from script. And that is a really, really good point. Now, I haven't actually put that in my slides, but I'm more than happy to come back to that as a question at the end and give you some tips on how, how to make yourself feel natural. Because being on camera is a huge challenge for well, about 95% of people. So uh, we'll come back to that one at the end. Good. So one, once you know you've got something that people want, uh, you, you've got an option. You've got really three options to, um, to pass it on. You do it one-to-one, -one, a bit like me and Nancy talking to each other now, which you will often do if you're coaching someone. So it's one-to-one. -one. 
or you go out into your local community to, I don't know, some women's group or some group that is relevant to your skills and you talk to them. So that is one to few. And that's a challenge with doing anything local. You can't really scale it because, I mean, even if you went to speak to a massive stadium, you're probably not speaking to more than one to several thousand, right? So you're limited by your ability to scale. Once you go to video, and as I say, you go through the looking glass or through the cupboard at the back of the wardrobe into Narnia, you have this virtual world of potentially 8 billion people coming up to market to, uh, you know, you've got to choose your clients in there. But it, it's, it, it, video gives, is the medium that allows you to scale massively. And in these days, scaling is so important because basically that, that, that's your income, right? Uh, would you agree, Nancy? You know, you, you make more money by having more people, more peeps in your tribe, which is another word I'm not too keen on, but yes. it's, it's a popular one. Yes. So one it's on. so important to have reach of your message. And someone I was speaking with last week was saying, well, I'm only sharing these videos in my own Facebook group. I'm only sharing these videos in my own Facebook community. But there's, as you say, 8 billion people on YouTube. If you're well, no, I mean, on the planet, I mean, we're, we're getting to where everyone will be. Well, there's 7.7 .7 billion at the moment, but I mean, potentially once, I mean, obviously all 7.7 .7 billion are not going to be your clients, but you you have a potential to be found by all of those folks. And that's intoxicating when you look at it from that yeah. perspective, because we can only touch as many people as we can touch one to one. But when if people really do love your message, love the way you show up, love the value you deliver. YouTube can be like a lasso to bring thousands and thousands of people to opt into your free gift or to enroll in your paid program or to work with you one on one in your mentorship or your mastermind or whatever it is that you want. Yep. And there are several ways of generating income from YouTube, which <coughs> Ooh, let's about. hear about that when you get to that point in the presentation. <coughs> so excuse me, I'm going to have a croaky throat this morning. So once you <clears throat> once you've decided you're going to go out on video there's or or any any way of expanding your reach beyond local there's only two things you need to think about all the time one is visibility how am i being seen how many people can reach me how am i being seen and the other is search which <clears throat> is as, as nancy said with reach is basically being found and you might think they're the same thing that they're not. They're two sides of the coin. The visibility is you taking yourself to as many people or making yourself accessible to as many people as you can. But search is something much more subtle. And a lot of people don't get it because we tend to be linear. We tend to want to go out from our brains and give our message out to people. And we have our own way of saying things. What a lot of people find difficult is turning it around and saying, if someone wants to find me, what words are they going to put into the search bar to find me? And that is a completely different way of looking at it. And it's something a lot of people have great difficulty with. So search is turning it around and saying, if, if I want people to, if I want people to find me, what keywords do I have to put into YouTube or Google? to kind of funnel them to me. Make sense? It does make sense. And I want to just take a poll. If you're live on the call and I see all your pretty faces in the chat, when you hear the word key word, does your, do your eyes glaze over and do you immediately think, yikes, that sounds too technical for me? If you have any comments about that, would love to hear them because that might be something we can dig into a little bit later but would love to hear if keywords scare you or if it feels too techno tech tech if it makes you nervous you know love to hear <laughs> any comments that anybody wants to share there all right keep going sue excuse me i've got a oh, see, <laughs> one person got says absolutely thing. exclamation point see thanks for being <laughs> honest thanks for being honest because sometimes when i hear keywords and long tail and some of these uh words that you hear I think my key word is death. Yikes, <laughs> Marine says. <laughs> you know, it's like doing the homework on your keywords is going to save, hasten the path to great 
visibility, but if you don't do the work on the keywords, you can be stuck at hello. Isn't that right, Sue? Keywords are everything I hate to say it, but to be found. I'll talk about Facebook because that's slightly different, but um, if you think about it, you want to go to, <clears throat> you want to know how to fix a widget or something. <laughs> Yeah, I want to do that so, all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, or whatever you want. You go to YouTube and you put in how to fix a widget. Boom, up comes the, up comes the, uh, the videos. So you're, it isn't only keywords, it's key phrases. But everything, Google and YouTube, <clears throat> and you know YouTube owns, Google owns YouTube anyway. So everything is search keyword based. And I hate to tell you that, but you're going to learn to love them. So that's okay. Well, if so, that's again, the one just, takeaway that everybody gets to, from within the first few minutes of our call is to no longer close your eyes when you're looking for keywords and key phrases. Be eyes wide open and tune into what yours are because it will be the key to your success. Absolutely. You cannot do video without keywords. Boom. Done. So again, I'm just, oh, sorry, Nancy, you're going to say? No, keep going. So again, I'm just, I'm just accenting this again. Visibility, you've got to be the lighthouse. You've got to manage to say, I'm here. I'm the flashing beam going around the world. Um, and you know, you don't have to be uh, visible to the whole world, but you do have to make yourself visible to your peeps, to the people that you want to help. So visibility is massively important. And the problem is, there are 300 hours of video uploaded every minute to YouTube. So you are basically Waldo in Where's Waldo? Because the people who, you, you, you know you, um, see for my example, I'm Sue Ferreira. I think everybody would just put in Sue Ferreira and search for me. Well, most of the world doesn't know Sue Ferreira, right? So, I'm Waldo sitting down in there. <clears throat> so I have to think about my skills, think about my keywords, and put those in so that, again, everything will be funneled towards me and I will be found in the search engines of YouTube because YouTube is a search engine the same as Google. Make sense? Yes, and just for mm -hmm. anchoring in specifics here, you're the Wisdom to Wealth Mastery Mentor, but what would be some of your keywords just to give people some expectation about how it, what it really means? Um, my keywords for each individual video would be different. Okay. So there are keywords for finding you, and there are keywords for each individual video that you make, and it's different. If, if you look at my, um, who I'm working with, is one of, the, one of my clients right now, as a realtor, um, obviously things like house for sale in a certain area, in a certain town are very high keywords. Um, but for her personally, it would be her name, the fact that she's a realtor, the company she works for. So you work both sides of it. You work the subject of the video and you work the person as well. Excellent. Thank you. So <clears throat> really my next slide is just a, a confirmation of what I've already said so I'll go forward but basically it's that it's it's that video gives you that ability to scale and reach so many more people than you could if you were just working your local town or your local market now this is really huge at the moment 82 percent of all web traffic is video and I would just let that sink in because it means that if you are ignoring video, you're basically only going to 18% of the market that's out there. Now, you wanna build your business on 18% instead of 100%, that's your choice. But for me, this is probably the biggest reason for doing video. It is, it is massive now, it is so massive. It's, 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 it's not until you really get into it, you realize just how massive it is. So, okay, so, so can I just want to ask another question, because yeah. sometimes I hear this from people. Oh, video, but my hair, I haven't been to the hairdresser in eight weeks. <laughs> I'm not 22 anymore. 
What if they see that I'm not 22 anymore? What if my, you know, what are, you know, people have all these reasons why they won't do it. And I'm sure you have heard them all. Like rattle yeah. off some of the excuses people give you about why they can't do it just for fun. I mean, if I, I think that's a really important point. And I would say, and maybe this is a bit unkind, but I think it's a truth. Every excuse that comes up really reflects back on you that you are not, you, you haven't done enough personal work, put it that way, so that you are confident that, to go out to see the world. And I think it's really difficult for women. Women have way more problem than guys. You know, we've always, you know, meant to be in the kitchen and all that kind of crap. So uh, I, I think it's difficult for some women. And I, I think every single excuse, especially today, when it's video has been going for a long time, every excuse is really a reason to say, I'm not confident to be seen. And that's tough. So if you're well, going let's to just give Maureen Curious a, a shout out for the sassy soundbite of the day. Excuses are like armpits. We all have them and they all stink. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Keep that one. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think, you know, I think that's the answer. And the other, the other reasons, especially because I do a lot of video tech, I get, you know, I get questions or how do I have a green screen? How do I, what microphones do I need? What equipment do I need? And this is, again, that's another it's a, it's a it's a displacement activity right it's a way of of delaying the inevitable that video is in your future if you're in business video is in your future done amen and, and i think the other thing is that a year from now you really will have wished you'd started today it takes time to to be seen you know you're not going to go from waldo today to being really well known tomorrow it takes time and persistence and when you want to give up you just keep going and i'll talk a little bit more about that uh for now so just really simply it's so easy to do video i'm sure you all have a smartphone and we're on zoom right now so all i'm going to say is all you need is to push the record button on your smartphone or click a link, send a link to someone and click a link on Zoom. That is, that is video. Don't come to me and say, do I need a green screen? Do I need, you know, what, what, what microphones, everything else? What lights do I need? You need this little finger and you need to push the red button. And when you've done your message, you push the red button again and that's it. That's all you need. <laughs> Show of hands, who's able to do that? All right, we had one person raise their hand. I'm not sure why, but thanks for keeping it simple. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It's that simple. And, uh, you know, you start on that and you practice and you practice and you, you go to that 10,000 hours. No, I, have, I do have a question. Go back to that former side. The way that the, the phone is shown is on a horizontal. Mm -hmm. And that is a real basic question is when somebody's doing a video with their phone, should they hold it horizontally or should they hold it vertically? If you could answer that question, somebody's going to be very grateful to have heard that direct from the source. Okay. I mean, you know, I've been in this a little while now. And as things go on, it, as a means of sorting you, like it's a means of making it more difficult for you to get to the top because everybody's clamoring to be visible. You keep putting in more awkward things that you have to do. Now, if you're going out on YouTube, it's landscape, which is what I've got here on the slide. Without any doubt, you do landscape. Um, if you do Instagram or one of those other ones that I don't even do, often you need to have it vertical, which is really annoying, right? Because it means you now have to make two videos. You have to make a, a one that, it, and that's why in that previous slide, the woman's got two, two, uh, two iPhones going. She doesn't actually, she has them both in landscape. But for different social media, you do landscape or you do portrait. Now, uh, for Facebook, it's probably a bit of both. The only problem is if you do a portrait vertical, if you do a vertical video on Facebook, 
and then you take that video and put it on YouTube, it's going to look mega, mega amateur because it's going to have two black bars at the side. Ah. And people will say, oh, she's just bought one over from video. You know, this is not proper. So I would say my preference by far, but then I'm a photographer anyway as well. My preference by far is for landscape. But, and certainly if you're going to do it on YouTube, YouTube is 16 by nine. And you need to use that, uh, that ratio, not a four by three. You need 16 by nine and, and landscape. Great. And you can change that on your phone. Those, those, those abilities to change those are on your phone. Brilliant. Thank you for clearing that up. So the next question is, what do I do? Where do I put my video? I think when you create a video, the answer is everywhere. You put it on your website, you put it on Twitter, you put it on Facebook, you put it on YouTube, you put it on Instagram if you're into Instagram. Um, you basically, if someone's looking for you, give them as many points of possible contact with you as possible. But again, I'm reducing it to something simple. I haven't got Instagram on here um, because it's big these days. I don't really like Instagram. I don't use it. Um, if you're an Instagram person, then there's videos on YouTube that will tell you how to do YouTube videos. Okay. For how to do videos for Instagram. There's two places where it's so easy and you know, these Facebook and YouTube. And I've got Facebook live there in quotes because still doing a live video on Facebook, Facebook will rank that video higher than a recorded one. But the, the big difference is not as much, I, I don't think it's as, as, as remarked as it was a few years ago when Facebook Live first came out. I think if you put any video up on Facebook, it's not gonna make a huge difference whether it's live or not now. Mm. Now, the thing about, I mean, I think, you know, if you really want to push it, of course you'll do them all live, but if you don't want to, just putting a video up on Facebook is, is good anyway. Makes sense? Yes. <clears throat> this is key. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Facebook is the hare. YouTube is the tortoise, which is why you use them both. With Facebook, you know, you create a video, you put it on Facebook, boom, within a day, it's gone down the timeline, Nobody ever goes back to look for it. Why not? Because Facebook is a lousy search engine. You can't go into Facebook and say, Nancy Jutton, you know, I mean, you might get something, but you, you cannot keyword and search in Facebook like you can on YouTube, right? It's, so Facebook is not a search engine. It's a place where pally folks put up stuff, right? The big advantage for you for Facebook is you don't need any tech. You do the video, Facebook um, edits it and saves it, and it goes onto your it goes onto your Facebook page. You don't have to do anything technical, but it's gone within twenty four hours, and very rarely do people go back and find it. Would you agree, Nancy? I've wondered about that. <clears throat> you know, I've actually wondered about it, and and I'm glad you're clearing this up. Because, I mean, Alex Mondozian, who is a very famous internet entrepreneur, has yeah. this expression called pack your bag moments. And when you go to a training, there's certain, you know, pack your bag moments where you got the value right away and you can pack your bag and leave. Because, but when you said Facebook is a lousy search engine, that to me is a pack your bag moment. That is one of those takeaways that I'm going to keep for a long time because. It, it was expressed in a way that I can actually understand why that matters. And YouTube, on the other hand, is searchable. Yep. And it's connected to Google, which makes it easier, a whole lot easier to find things that you're looking for. And if that's you that we're looking for, all the better. And I think if you can be found, people can find out whether they know, like, and trust you and whether or not they want to do business with you. And so I like the idea of being able to do both. And um, I like the expression that you're saying, the tortoise and the hare, that makes sense to me. Yeah, thanks. And, and I think it's really a key. I, I think you have to use both, but, but people usually find you on Facebook because they already know you, right? 
So for some reason, they've come into your circle of influence. So what so, I've been well, doing, what I've been doing lately, and I know we've got some chat going and we want to check on that, but sometimes, I mean, real life here, sometimes I'll, I use a platform called BeLive.tv yeah. and it allows me to use Facebook Live, but from my desktop and I can broadcast to a Facebook group, a Facebook page, my personal page. I can broadcast directly to YouTube if I want to, but Sometimes, especially in the last few weeks where platforms are getting a lot more usage than they perhaps were before we ran into this situation, the, I find that it's a little buggy. And sometimes when I want to go live at a very specific time, the thing is spinning, 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 spinning. I really did want to do a Facebook Live, but for, for, for some reason, the technology was failing me. So what I've been doing just by default is going direct to YouTube <laughs> And then subsequently repurposing my videos from YouTube to all my social platforms. Great. I agree. And I, I, I mean, I love Be Life, but it, it's got buggy and I, I don't use it anymore. So, and now again, let's, I'm. Yeah. Let's just check in here for sorry to interrupt you, but hmm. I went, we had a couple of comments. Um, Marilla says, I'm 77 and I don't have a cell phone, but I've been making videos and have taken to three to four classes. Well, Marilla, you are. That's amazing that you don't have a cell phone. Um, and I'm glad you're doing videos anyway. Bettina says, Bettina Carey, I repost videos and doing watch parties to make videos last weeks. I also take videos to LinkedIn. Um, Sue, maybe you can comment on this because she's also saying, I also share on 18 groups to get more reach on Facebook. Great. Can, can you comment on this whole thing about watch parties? And is this an effective strategy? If you yep. were thinking, I mean, yeah, you, I think you was that Morella? That was Bettina. Bettina <clears throat> doing absolutely the right thing. Just get it out as anywhere as you far as you can. I'd be interesting to know what if what um, response you're getting from LinkedIn. Uh, um, I personally, I've spent a lot of time working my LinkedIn channel, and I find it's a dead medium. Uh, I. I just find that the, you just don't, <clears throat> sorry again, you don't get the interaction. Um, it's like pulling teeth. I, I must admit, I, for me, being on LinkedIn is like being at a cocktail party when I was in England when I was young and everybody being frightfully uptight and trying to say the right thing. And I think, oh, this is, you know, I just don't, I don't get <laughs> any feeling from LinkedIn. <clears throat> I get a genuine feeling from Facebook but I don't from LinkedIn. I, I'd just be interested in how, what response you've had from LinkedIn videos, but keep doing it. Well, we'll see what she chimes in because she usually has a response. So, so we get the idea we should do Facebook Live and YouTube. One is more yeah. lasting, one is more fleeting. Excellent yeah, point. Right. Yeah, um, so to, to, to take that further um, and just kind of reiterate it, that the advantage of Facebook stroke lights is it's immediate you can be much looser in your conversation on a facebook live you it, it's it's a it's a conversational platform right so you can chat you can make a few jokes you can you can basically bring people into no like and trust you that's the whole point of 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 live video anyway but you can really do that on facebook it helps you build relationships and like i said it's simple to create no editing it does save on Facebook and you know, you can go to people's videos and see what they've got on there, but usually you don't. Um, and as I say, you don't have to go live to put stuff on, uh, on Facebook anyway. Now, if I look at, no, YouTube, let, me, let me make sure I understand that. Cause that, that wasn't sure. Uh, is that what you mean? Like, like we're, we're right here on a zoom call. And we do have live participants, but when you say you don't have to go live, like, what do you mean? Well, I, I mean, you know, everybody gets hung up about doing video and it must be live. If you do a video on Facebook, it doesn't have to be live. You can do this video and repurpose it and put it on your Facebook page and it's just fine. I get it. Thank you. So don't, a lot of people get their knickers in a twist about the thought of going live because they're scared they're going to make a mistake or whatever. And you know, if, if that's your concern while you're building your video experience, then don't do live. Just do a recorded one and then send it up. 
So I just want to share a little story, a little anecdote. You know, we're sheltering in place, which means the dog is here. My husband is here. We've got, we've got real life happening. Some people have kids that are, you know, trying to get their schoolwork done and delivery people that might be ringing the doorbell. And I was doing a, a Facebook, I was doing a live rehearsal really, where I was recording a presentation to uh, one of these platforms. And my husband comes through the door. He says, hi, honey, I brought lunch. <laughs> and if you took me back to the way I was five years ago about being such a perfectionist, I would have stopped the video, I would have grumbled, and I would have said, now I have to start all over because my husband interrupted and it sounds like I have a real life going on in my house and I don't want people to know that I have a real life going on in my house. As it was, he said, hi, honey, you know, the lunch is here. And I said, great job, sweetie. <laughs> I just reached out and said, excuse me, great job. I'm on a call. I'll be up shortly. And then I looked right back at the camera and I said, and this is what we do as we shelter in place. We bend and we sway. On with the show. <laughs> and that's really, <clears throat> that's really important because, again, then it, it's the real you. And, <laughs> and, and that, to a certain extent, that's important on YouTube. But in Facebook, people want to know you. It's, it's, you know, it is. It's friends. Um, and it's, it's conversation. So that's great. Well, and and nobody wants question. you to be perfect. Anyone on the call ever get mortified when things don't go perfectly when you're trying to do something? Anybody willing to confess that? <laughs> so I'm just saying, um, if, if you've ever felt that way, practice the bend and sway. It just creates even more connection that you're a real human being and, and uh, call it for what it is. Keep on going. <laughs> so so, so um, now, now to look at YouTube, which I say is the tortoise. And... It's a search engine. YouTube works by keywords. And I'm going to say something now, which those of you who don't like keywords is going to, ugh. but in truth, you never make a video to go onto YouTube until you know that video is, is needed. So you search the keywords first, and you also take those keywords and you put them into YouTube first and you see who else has made a video on the same subject. Now, most people think, my goodness, someone's made a video on the same subject, they've got three million views, and another couple of people got a million views, not worth my doing that subject. Wrong. That is exactly the subject you want to do. It doesn't matter how many people are doing the same subject, do it too, because that's something that people want. And your version of it will appeal to the people that, you know, that basically they like you and they will come into your video. So you really do need to, it, you can be more spontaneous on Facebook, but when it comes to YouTube, it's much more like a structured business. You need to decide what videos you're making. And I actually have them all ahead of time like you know boom, 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 boom. you can actually catalog them for a year if you want or longer and you need to know that those videos are, are are popular or at least are solving a problem that someone is having and um that's the way to be successful on youtube i, I see so many channels where people just chuck up a video i know they're never going to be seen because they have not keyword searched it first nancy a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed a LinkedIn expert about how to optimize one's LinkedIn profile. And the reason I wanted to interview her was because when I searched for how to optimize a LinkedIn profile, I got so many videos returned to me that I was so overwhelmed that I didn't know how to prioritize which one should get my full attention. And I'm sure I'm not the only one that's had that problem. How can we prioritize what comes back in the search to actually give our attention to something that comes into a search so that we can subsequently apply that same lesson to what we do with our own videos? That's a really good question, Nancy. Okay, so I'm going to go back to what you've just said. 
Here's what Nancy put into YouTube, and I'm going to focus on YouTube for now. How to, you go and have a look and see how many videos on YouTube start how to. How to optimize three great keywords. LinkedIn, right? And so with those four keywords, or how to maybe one, but with that, those four words immediately, with the search engine and the algorithm, I mean, it's just algorithms, right? Uh, it's going straight through to people who've done videos on how to optimize LinkedIn. And whenever anything comes up, you get a list, right? <laughs> Hundreds of them. YouTube will always optimize the most popular at the top. So I would always just look at the top three to begin with. And then you look at two things. You look at how many views it's had, and when the video was uploaded. That information is right there with the little thumbnails and all the lists you get. Because if they've got 3 million views and they were put up 10 years ago, and the next one has 3 million views and it was put up last week, I'm going to the one that has 3 million views and was put up last week, right? And the chances are it actually will be the top one. So you always need, because the, the one thing about YouTube is the longer that video is up, the more, the more views it's going to have but if it's only clicking up one or two a week uh, and others are clicking up a thousand a day yours is not going to rank as well as the one that is clicking up a thousand a day makes sense yes thank you for clarifying that very helpful because yeah. what i ended up doing and i'll just be very candid you know how there are some people that learn best by reading and some people learn best by watching and some people learn best by being in a live setting where they can be with a real person i thought to myself i just want to have an interview with someone who knows this like the back of her hand so that we can bring the high points to my community as quickly as possible with trust and um, impact and so i found someone who was willing to do that conversation with me and it was incredibly well appreciated but it was also underneath that this whole learning style thing because I think that, especially now during COVID-19, there's a little bit of screen fatigue and people are going from their, their televisions to their computer screens to their, their iPhones. And sometimes it's just nice to have a real conversation with a real expert and tell it to people straight so that they can be part of a community of lifelong learners who are rising up to reach the next bar and that's kind of what went on with in my mind when i when i invited that expert and when i invited you to be part of this conversation today because it's such a refreshing thing to actually have a conversation where you can ask the nitty gritty questions that sometimes you might be afraid to ask in another setting so i really appreciate this so. that's another <coughs> really important point you've just brought up nancy um just because those top three come up does not mean that there isn't a really good video further down in the rankings, further down in the page, scroll, 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 it goes on forever. What it does mean is that, or is likely to mean, is that the person who made the good video, who's like number, ranked number 300, doesn't know how to get that video seen on YouTube. Uh. And that, that's the key and that's what I want to talk about in our next little chat. Well, but, and, and um, speaking of which, I want to address this because maybe um, Bettina Carey is asking a good question. Can Sue please comment on the order in which you use keywords for titles as YouTube reads left to right? How to rank on YouTube using keywords versus how to rank keywords on YouTube? That's a really good question and, a, and could be a long long subject, but you, you've got it, Bettina. You understand that there's lots of, there's two places, two primary places where YouTube keywords matter and you've already searched them right. So if we go back to Nancy's example, um, how to is often the start because that's a solution based keyword, right? And then the actual subject and solution comes after it. So it's how to optimize LinkedIn. If you were, um, suppose you then wanted to put Nancy Jutton after it, you're not going to put Nancy Jutton first, how to optimize LinkedIn, because you are absolutely right. 
the the headline is is very important for youtube and they rank you from left to right in keywords so you want to put how to optimize linkedin nancy jutton or something else not the other way around and that would be it's, another it's, pack your bag moment don't you agree <laughs> that is a pack your bag moment for sure good and that's okay. really key that's really that's really key that that headline is are your main keywords and that you then want to take those keywords and repeat them over and over again wherever you can so like i always just always copy the title and slap it in the description uh because you're going to put something in the description and then keep it then in the kind of dialogue the chat that i put in there i i rework those words over and over and over again because the more time those keywords turn up with the with the crawlers on youtube um they will pick that up and pick that up and pick that up and the more you the more you pander to its algorithm the more highly you're going to be ranked and picked up by youtube make sense again yes and bettina adds by the way if you have not titled your videos correctly you can go back in and retitle and retag and she's asking also if you might comment on the difference between keywords and key phrases when tagging your video. That's another good question. Um, I think you use, I, I use keywords to mean key phrases as well. And I, and again, I think that's a lovely, thank you for bringing that up, Bettina, because a lot of people don't realize that phrases can be keywords. Uh, uh, and key phrases often are superior to individual words i mean if i was going again going back to this great example that nancy's just given us i would be putting in tags uh, at the bottom and so so one place is your headline and the other is the tags at the bottom which is the keywords for youtube i mean the to put in how to organize linkedin profile is a phrase but that that would go into my tags as of as all the words so i want to get really basic here with you because i want to make sure people get this because i yeah when you upload a video to youtube there's a place for you to describe the video there's a title for the video and then there's a description for the video yeah and that's where you can say during this engaging conversation with uh, YouTube video expert Sue Ferreira, you are going to learn boom, boom, and boom. Yeah. And then, is that there's another field when you're yeah. uploading where you can indicate tags? Yeah, and this is the field most people forget. Yes, so that's why. Talk to us yeah. about that. Like, what is that? Why does it matter? Why should we care? And that would be helpful. Um, okay, so and this is something I was going to cover in the next in our oh, next yes, chat. Go right ahead. <laughs> but 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 I'll, I'll say now that um, in the background, everything is keyworded, and so you there's a, there's a there's a section called tags, which you don't see when the video comes up on YouTube. You don't see those tags unless you have some added software, which I have. So I can always see on every video what tags what keywords i'm going to use the word tags and keywords interchangeably here <clears throat> what what tags and keywords people have put in to help youtube find that video and often i'll look at them and say it's never going to be found um so that is part of doing your keyword research at the beginning so you need to get the, the you need to get the headline right uh then you can repurpose that headline but you also need to get the keywords correct in the tag box as well and i'll show you that next time okay good so i'm, I'm nearly done here um <clears throat> i think this is a really <coughs> excuse me important point i said up here that once you put something on youtube <coughs> sorry folks that video is there forever unless you take it down which is great because um you can think of youtube as a little army of your clones because every video you make is basically a little clone of you right so if you build an army of what i call mini me's on youtube they're marketing you <clears throat> 24 hours a day seven days a week 
365 days a year in 24 time zones for free. I mean, you can't get much better than that. And that to me is the power of YouTube over Facebook is that those little mini me's just sit there, people search for whatever your subject is about and you eventually build up a big army of, of these little, little clones working for you. I love that. I love that. And I think that that is the major power of, of YouTube. Now I, in my journey, um, just to finish off now, I was, um, I was teaching video and then, you know, because of my illness and things, I got away from that and I realized I'd ended up, I'm a bit weird. You might've worked that out already by now, <laughs> but I, um, I found I have this knowledge and skill to run people's YouTube channels. So I have slid off to running YouTube channels rather than doing my own YouTube channel. And um, so I'm not, I'm not teaching video anymore. Also, I got this cute little granddaughter and I wanted to spend more time with her and I wanted to get out of social media. So this is really suiting me well at this time in my life. But I have had several people that I have learned so much from. So I wanted to leave you with people to follow. Now, there are oodles of great people to follow. But I have found these four outstanding in helping me talk about video and learn about video. And the first one, top left, is Sunny Lenarduzzi. Sonny's fantastic. Um, and I have, I, Nancy asked me this at the beginning, I have no affiliate association with any of these folks. And in fact, I've, I know Sonny and many times I've said, you need an affiliate program because I would have made a fortune with a number of people that I've referred to you because she's excellent. So Sonny Lenarduzzi is uh, one person. Uh, Steve Dotto is another. They're both based in Vancouver, but they are global. They're really well known. Now, Steve is, Steve must be about 62 now. So he, he focuses on the, his, his thing is the boomers. And he has so much information on not only video, but every kind of tech possible. Steve is fantastic. Justin Brown is in Australia. And he is great. He's very similar to um, Sonny, but he's very cut and dried and simple too, very easy to understand, as is Sean Cannell, who is in California. I'm not saying you have to follow these. There are many, many people who are really good, but these four I go back to over, over in time. Now, you, they all have programs, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say join them uh, because a lot of people will come to me and say, what program should I have? What should I buy? And my, my advice is they've all got fantastic YouTube channels before you decide on having them as a mentor, which everyone needs to eventually have, just go and look at their YouTube channels, follow their videos, see what they're doing, see how they present themselves. And so those are the four folks that I would recommend have, have, have been really helpful to move my video along. Um, and that's really all I have for you. So we can go to questions. Well, I have a couple of things I want to say, and I absolutely want to bring it up for questions. But one of my good friends and clients and colleagues is named Rebecca Zung. Mm -hmm. And I know Maureen and I know her well because we spent a few days at the Oprah conference in Los Angeles having the time of our lives just before this global pandemic descended. But what was so interesting is that Rebecca Zung, goal, her goal for that weekend was for her YouTube subscribers to reach 1,000 subscribers. And so we all banded together, the ladies that, that were doing Oprah, and we did our part to advance that for her. And she got to 1,000 before the end of the weekend. Well, yesterday, I just happened to check her YouTube channel, and I couldn't believe my eyes. Almost 16,000 views. Rebecca Zung, number one percent top divorce attorney. And I had a conversation with her this morning because, you know, I actually had to go to my, my reading glasses. I couldn't believe my eyes. How could you go from 1,000 subscribers to almost 16,000 in like eight weeks? So I had a conversation with her this morning, and one of the things I asked her is I said, there must be someone 
you've been learning from to achieve this magnificent growth, who is it? And the reason I'm bringing it up is she said, I really like Sunny, what was yeah. her name? Lezard Leonard Uzi. Leonard Uzi. And she yeah. said, watch her videos, join her free program, belly up to the bar to get all that you can from her. And then if you feel called, maybe she's the one for you. And the other thing she said was that which is a really important point that we started this thing with is one of the things Rebecca says is don't try to make not your people, your people. Yeah. And sometimes you'll see someone online and they're super successful and they're boasting about their, whatever their accomplishments are. But for some reason you're repelled by them. If you're repelled by them, don't buy their program, you know, don't buy their program. <laughs> Find the one that's going to be right for you. So I'm really glad that you mentioned four really great choices, and I'm sure there are others that people can choose from. But um, I wanted to bring up Rebecca because she would be another person that you could go and look for on YouTube to see how she's using her thumbnail and how she's titling her things and, and how she's describing things underneath the video. Because she told me this morning, and I took notes. I'm sorry, I'm reaching for them. But her, she's only been at this a very short period of time, but her opt-in list has grown to over 11,000 in a very short period of time. Her YouTube videos went from 1,000 to 16,000 in a very short period of time. And she sold 102 of her programs and brought in over $50,000 in a very short period of time. Her niche is helping you deal with a narcissist. <laughs> in a, your divorce negotiation, so that's very niche -y. But there are riches in niches, and another thing I wanted to say about that is that in this pandemic where people are spending a lot more time with their loved ones, anyone who was on the edge about thinking about getting a divorce might be hastening the path to... I didn't want to say that, but that was my thought too. <laughs> Anyway, that's enough about me. What questions, Gerald? I just wanted to bring that up because it seemed like a parallel comment to who you were recommending. What questions could Sue still answer while we still are great, grateful to have her with us that she that you would like to go? Please chime in at anyone that wants to ask a question. I'm just going to, while you're thinking, I'm going to come back to Bettina. She says in the chat, I also transcribe my videos and use them for blogs and posts. And, and, I, and she said, <clears throat> she's absolutely right. I didn't get into that because I wanted to keep it focused on video. But the power of video also is that you make a video, you got a video. You can, with one click, you can separate the audio. Now you have a podcast. From there, and, and she says you transcribe, she transcribes her videos. In actual fact, YouTube transcribes them for you, and I'll show you where you can pick up your, so basically your entire script, YouTube transcribes for you, makes a few errors every now and then, but hey, it doesn't take much editing. Is that, what we're, do on, is that what we're gonna do on the next call? You're gonna show us yeah. This stuff? Yeah. Okay. Then you have a blog post and everything, and Bettina's right. So the power of video is not only the power of video to connect in itself, but it's also the power to be able to have audio and um, and transcribed post or whatever you want to do with it. So I have a question. Like we're doing a conversation now live, and we're using Zoom. And when this call is over, I will be uploading it to the Get Known Get Paid YouTube channel for Nancy Judden. When it gets uploaded there, will will it also transcribe? Because because we use Zoom, or do you, does it only transcribe if you go direct to YouTube? Well, it depends <clears throat> when you upload, are you uploading this video to your YouTube channel or are you uploading it to YouTube and then using the link into your, your website? Sorry. Uh, and so you either upload this video direct the whole into video. your website. I, yeah. I, I upload the whole video. That's a, okay. That, Is that, that not a best will... practice? Is that not a best practice? The only problem is videos are pretty big files and you will kind of gum up your, eventually gum up your website. Uh, it will slow down when um, working, but and you can do it that way um, until you find it's slowed down. Um, so another option is to put it on YouTube. You don't have it to be, if you don't want it to be visible on YouTube, you can keep it unlisted and nobody can see it. 
but you can still take that link and have it on your have it on your website or wherever else you want it. Make sense? Okay, I think so. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. Marilla saying, does YouTube get the script that it uses for a transcript with from Zoom? Um, whatever you upload to YouTube, it will listen to it and it will transcribe it. Every now and then it decides it has a, a, a bit of a myth and it won't do it, but that's pretty rare. So you upload a video to YouTube and within usually within five minutes, the transcript is there and you get a, tr you actually get a timed transcript. Um, because you know, on YouTube, uh, a lot of people watch videos without the sound on. So you have the closed captioning at the bottom and the closed captioning is synchronized time-wise with your talking. Is that but an you, option that you select when you upload it to do closed captioning? Um, yes, yes, you can. Yeah, that's an option you can do in the background. Uh, and it, you know, it depends. It, it, some people are, are happy to just leave the transcribing that YouTube does. It doesn't do any punctuation. It doesn't do any capitalization. I'm kind of an OCD thing. So I like to go through and I capitalize everything. And, um, and Bettina is asking another question. And this is a, she says, what's the significance of your logo? It looks like a brain, but also, <laughs> why don't you comment on that? Show it to us oh, again with your PowerPoint so people will reference it. it, when it hang on. Uh, it, it, it's basically a split brain uh wisdom on one side and wealth on the other so it was oh. wisdom wealth, mastery right so it's a tree of growth along with wisdom and knowledge and money and knowledge and all that kind of symbolism oh beautiful maureen yeah, was also asking. asking a question about the landscape versus so just to give you a little back maureen why don't you speak up for a moment and tell them what you've been up to you've been doing these regularly scheduled Facebook lives. Just give Sue a little appreciation for what that is and then ask your question live. Okay, Sue, I took this challenge that I'm doing 30 days of Facebook lives. I'd never done them before. Uh, and so I've made every technical error, but I just keep going. Um, and it's sort of fun to learn. <laughs> that's that's but, right, that's what you do. So I was trying to figure out on my phone how to turn off the mirror so that when I held something up, they could actually read it. Um, and I haven't been able to figure that out on Zoom, but I, I tried to do it landscape and it, it came up on the camera while the live was going on my end that said, turn to portrait mode, otherwise it'll be sideways something in the whole video. So the beginning of my video is sideways and then it goes straight up. Is there a workaround for that? So there's two things I think you're talking about right now. One is that- <coughs> there are The mirror and then the sideways because you yeah, said landscape. Yeah. So if you if if you if you're having problem with the mirroring, I have a YouTube video on that. So I'll send I, you the link. I'll put the link perfect. in, okay? Or I'll send it to Nancy. Because there's just a couple of buttons in the back end that you push and then it, it comes the right way out to people. So that's easily solved. The question of going from landscape to portrait while you're doing it, you will find it won't change you actually have to if you want it to be landscape you have to put it into landscape first and then hit the button okay that's what i thought i had done on yeah. on my phone for facebook yeah. live and it told me go into portrait mode otherwise you'll be sideways yeah exactly so what it was telling you to do was stop go into portrait and start again because it won't flip if if you if you you, you basically just get a sideways video so you don't want that to happen um, and, and the same issue, you can, you can get mirroring on the portrait mode in the same way as you can on landscape, because that's a fix in the back end of, of the well, video. I, and love I, it. I got a video on that. So, and I'll, do you I'll have that, for that Zoom? Link. I mean, Zoom, I know how to do it. Yeah. So. Okay, thank yeah, you. So it's just something in the back of your phone. Um, and it's, it's the same fix, whether you have, because it, it's a fix. Um, I think it's the same fix regardless of whether you're on a, an Apple phone, an iPhone, or uh, an Android. Great, thank you. So, so I'll, I'll send that link to Nancy and uh, you can have a look at it. So today what we did is we accomplished the basics about why we need to do video, 
that if we don't, we're going to be left with only 16% of our upside instead of 84%, and that we need to be on YouTube because Facebook is a lousy search engine. Those were just some of the, the take your bag, pack your bag moments that came away. What we're going to do the next time, we also emphasize the importance of search words and keywords and key phrases, and without them, you will never be found. That is a really big, big idea. You've got that, yeah? <laughs> yes, everybody? So the next time we meet, we're going to go into some more nitty-gritty detail. Uh, right, Sue? Could you just give us yeah. a little bit of a preview about what's next to come so that people will be intoxicated at the prospect of sitting at the feet of your wealth to wisdom they mastery? Might not. They might not. Because, yeah, I'm going, and I'm going to try not to overwhelm you. Um, that's a good disclaimer. Thank Otherwise, that means I'm going to overwhelm you. Um, I'm not going to look at Facebook at all. Although Facebook in the last couple of years has started on a pay business page, not on a personal page. It has started where you actually do some keywording and stuff in the background. And I'm sure you've, you've all seen that. But I'm going to look at the YouTube keywording um, and how you upload a video. You don't just get your video and upload it to YouTube. If you do that, it's never, ever ever going to be seen unless it's something hugely special that you happen to i don't know you had to you happen to record so you're going to be talking about what goes on, on underneath it how back end. Describe it. yeah all back end stuff and the things that youtube wants to see to find you and promote you and i'm going to leave you with this if you start a youtube channel today don't expect to get any traction for nine months or so. And that is sobering, but it means that you need to keep, you need to just keep plugging away. And I would start with putting out a video a week on your YouTube channel, but don't, don't get upset if you're not seeing buy-in for nine months or even a year, because it takes that long for you to be found and ranked. And consistency is the key with YouTube. So they want to see that you, you're really serious. They are, in the last couple of years, they've made some big changes and they are really making it that only the committed get seen. And so that's what you have to prove. Okay. There are a couple of little nitty gritty things that I thought we could cover. If you just, may I borrow you for just a couple more seconds? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes when people start their YouTube videos, they have interesting greetings. Like, hey guys, what's up everybody? And other such salutations. What's your point of view about that? And what is, in your view, the preferred way to get it started? When people go to YouTube, they want an answer right now, right? You, if, if you go to YouTube with how to, you want that answer. You give them that answer in the first five seconds. So I don't even do the hi, my name is Sue Ferreira stuff. I say today I'm going to show you how to organize your LinkedIn profile. Bang. You have five seconds to, to capture their attention. If you don't do it in those five seconds, they're gone. So when I get the hi, what's up? I hope you've had an all nice Christmas. Boom, they're gone. I am not interested in those people. So you've really got to banish the banal banter at the beginning. Banish the banal no, banter no. at the beginning, people. Yeah. Get right to the point. And I've seen you do this. How to do da 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 da. You deliver, you wow them with your value. And then you can say, hi, I'm Sue Ferreira. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the little red bell so you never miss a video and can't wait to see you next time. You can still say all that and get all your positioning in, but you got to start out with bam. So yep. we're banishing the banal banter at the beginning and we're going yep. for the bam. <laughs> and, and, and I really try and make every word count. I, you know, YouTube is not, that's why I say there's the difference. Facebook is loosey goosey, you can chat, but for YouTube, bang, give them the details. 
uh, quite often you'll see in the comments, cut the crap. You didn't get to the subject till one minute 38. I'm not subscribing to your channel. So it, you make it really, really precise and concise and just give them the answer they're looking for. Precise and concise. I love that. I love that. So let's all say, let's, let's demonstrate our appreciation to Sue Ferreira from Wisdom to Wealth Mastery. Won't you post a comment in the chat about how well you've been served by this? Because everybody wants to be seen, heard, celebrated, and psychic compensation in the form of a lovely compliment would be most appreciated. I'm sure that she would appreciate it. And I'm so honored that you would all join us today for a meaty conversation that was of great value. And who here, by show of hands, let me see them, who's ready to do something with YouTube? Brilliant. Everybody say great. yes. And uh, we say, love this, Sue and Nancy. This was a delightful surprise. What a lovely gift from you both. And so love hearing those comments. So please, please keep them coming. Sue, I am so glad that our paths crossed at Tammy Lane's Facebook advertising event so that we could become friends for life. And I was yeah. so grateful that you accepted this wonderful uh, um, invitation to bestow your value to the folks that showed up live. Um, extremely valuable, probably the best I've seen. Thanks bunches. Wow. This has been value, such value, especially and as, as I'm just getting started in video. And I would say one more thing about all of this, and I'm just going to reveal something to you all because we're just, I'm learning right along with you. Right now, we don't really know what people are going to buy, unless you're Rebecca Zung helping people get out of your narcissistic marriage and making $50,000 a month. Um, some of us might be struggling to find what it is that people are going to buy from us right now. It's a very different situation. We find ourselves with a COVID-19 pandemic that's unlike anything we've seen before. But what I have been doing is I've been listening to the whispers that I've been hearing from my clients and from the people who follow me. People are saying, I don't know how to, can you help me with those kinds of questions? And it's in your social media feed. It's in your, it's where you pay attention if we're always thinking about how we can sell the next thing, we might be missing some great opportunity we have to be of service to people that we had no idea how good it could be. I heard people say, I don't know how to use YouTube, or I'm slapping up my videos and I'm not doing anything with them. I know that that's not the right thing to do. I'm thinking, what could I do to help people accelerate on a faster path to success? And who do I know with whom I can collaborate in service to fill the need. And so I hope that by me modeling this for you, you can see that you can, even though you may not know all the answers, you can reach out to an expert who does have all the answers. And all of a sudden, both of you are elevated for having made the contribution. So reach as high as possible. I reached out to the number two person, to Gary V, to talk to you about YouTube. How high can you reach? to find someone that can elucidate on something that your community needs to know. I know I was talking to Maureen yesterday and she does these beautiful videos. And I said, do videos with people who are leaders in this, how to have bold conversation space and let their light make your star shine brighter because the rising tide does lift all the boats. I was fortunate to do an interview with Bettina Carey. She's got a big following. I've got a decent following. All of a sudden, the two of us are like everywhere. And then I'll say one more thing that is a very personal comment, and I'm just revealing this to you because we're all friends now. But sometimes if you're a little bit introverted, being seen everywhere is really exhausting. It's very exhausting. And I was exhausted yesterday because I did an interview and a podcast and a this and a that. And it's like, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. So. If you find yourself exhausted by your visibility, give yourself a day off, go walk the dog, go do something that's non-technology related. Take care not to inhale your own fumes. You're not that fabulous. <laughs> you just have to show up in service and believe that good things will come from it. That's what I believe. And Sue, I love you to death. I'm so glad you came. And thank you all for joining us. And so I think we should, any parting words before we say bye-bye for now? 
I, I think just one thing, I've really enjoyed it. And I, I just encourage everybody to keep practicing. It, it, is, it doesn't come immediately. And I, and I would end with saying, if you ever have a question, go to YouTube, it's all there. I mean, I have people <laughs> phoning me and saying, how do I, and I say, YouTube, go to YouTube. So it's free, everything is there. Well, um, that's what a fiscally responsible person will do. Yeah. Yeah. When in doubt, go to YouTube and find the answer from an expert who's proven his or her value. Apply what you learn, create results, then you'll have additional funds that you can invest into other products and programs that will resonate with you and be your people to guide you to the next next, next step, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's there's everything there. And and Bettina, you're obviously well on your way. Did you want to say something, <laughs> Bettina? Oh, sorry. I didn't know I my I was I'm not muted now. Um, yeah, I love this. This is really great. You know, I live and breathe uh, a lot around marketing and do a lot uh, for clients. And I learned a couple uh, things. One thing I will I learned today, which you know I know a lot. And I've been tra hand transcribing everything that I've been doing on YouTube and, you know, repurposing it and reusing it. And now I don't have to do that. I can let YouTube do that. So that's really a great, like, as Nancy puts it, the price of admission today is spending my hour with you as to learn something that I can now say probably hours of time. So I'm very interested in the next session where you're going to get into the brass text because I know that I'll uncover other things that I might not know. It's good to share. Well, thank you so thank much you, for joining. And I thank have just one more, one more ask for everybody. I'm going to render this video and I'm going to upload it to the Nancy Jutton YouTube channel. And I am going to remember who was here. But if you got value from it, when I tell you that the YouTube is up, will you do, do both of us, would we do all of us a favor and will you share it with people in your groups and elsewhere? Because we've generously shared, we've provided resources, we've provided answers to a prayer, to a whisper that can become a roar for all of us. And the rising tide really will lift all the boats. Won't you do that? Can I have your agreement? That would be so helpful. And That's also make a comment, make a comment below. Yes. Because we've got, if we've got 15 people on here, and we all make a comment and Nancy replies to all of those comments. That's 30 comments that immediately makes that video. Uh, the, the crawlers, the YouTube crawlers will say, oh, 30 comments on this video. It will rank it higher. It's all these little things. So uh, put a comment below and get Nancy to reply and that will boost this video. I would so appreciate that. And in terms of when we're going to do this next, Sue and I are going to powwow, and she's going to let me know when her busy schedule will allow for it. And hopefully, it will be soon. And I will share that in the YouTube, in, in the in the Raise Your Voice, Make Your Impact Facebook group, and in the other ways that I have to share my message with all of you. So we will be hopefully doing that soon. And uh, I know people are already um, holding their breath because they can't wait. <laughs> All is good. I, 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 really think, we, I think we did it, and thank you for being so generous. Really, we love you to pieces, Sue Ferreira. Wisdom to Wealth Mastery. Thank you all for joining. Mwah. More to you, everybody, Bye. and that red button. <laughs> all right. Yes. Yes. The red button. Subscribe. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Okay. I'm gonna hit. End, I'm gonna hit end the meeting. Sue, thank you so much. <laughs>